Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I really hope everyone has been doing well. Today I am sharing some Easter and spring DIYs for you. These are some of my favourites so I really hope that you enjoy. When you finish your eggs don't throw this out because you're going to be starting your first DIY with it. I'm going to give it a coat or two of some white gesso. So as you can see I've ripped off as much as I can from the label. I just left it up because we're going to be covering that anyway. Now you're going to take your hot glue and apply some to the top of the carton. And then we're going to add some moss to that. I'm using reindeer moss in a darker green that you can see here. Next you're going to take some eggs, I've got these glittery ones and I'm just going to stick them how I've done it. Hopefully I can get them in the same placement. I'm just going for some pastel colours and adding the final egg here. And then I'm taking some trees left over from Christmas and I'm just going to add that on right beside the egg and then I'm taking a longer one here in dark green and we're just going to add that to the back as well now I'm taking some paper flowers in pink just to go with the nice pastel colours that we've used and I'm just going to carry on decorating adding hot glue on the bottom I'm kind of going for a shabby chic vintage look And then I'm taking this fluffy rabbit, I've taken my eyes off because it just made it look tacky and I don't like those googly eyes on them. So I'm going to add a little hot glue to the bottom. So let me just stick that there. And now I'm just using this little banner from my die cut book. For my banner I'm going to add some letters using these dry transfer lettering. So just taking my pen. I'm going to write Easter on there. I had too much space left over so I've just taken one of these heart gem stickers and added that on there. And it does look quite vintage so I'm okay with that. And I'm going to add a little hot glue to the banner and stick it onto the tree. Just at the top. Now I'm just adding a little bit of detail on the side here. I'm going to write one dozen eggs using the dry transfer lettering again. And here's the first DIY. I'm really happy with it. I love the colours. I just love how cute, shabby chic and vintage it is. And I know that it's not one dozen eggs, but I don't know. I just felt like writing that. You might be thinking, what am I doing with this bowl of empty eggshells? You're going to need it for the second DIY. So you're going to take your hot glue and we're basically going to make like a wreath using these eggshells. So you're just going to stick them together to complete a circle. Once you have your wreath ready, you can go and spray paint it if you like. I'm going to choose spray paint it white, you can leave it natural. Now I've got this wooden lug from my garden. And I'm going to place the egg reap on top. I've just been trying different moss off camera and I'm going to stick with the reindeer moss again. So you're going to place it inside your eggshells. Now I'm going to take my tub of dried flowers to decorate. 
So I'm just going to place them inside the eggshells alongside the moss. And now, just to finish off, I'm taking this beautiful rugger and placing him in the centre. And here's the second project. I'm so happy with it because it looks so pretty and high-end. And I was really worrying, thinking that it might look tacky or it might just not work, bringing it to life from my imagination. So yeah, just super happy with this one. For our fair DIY, I'm starting off with this frame. I'm just going to remove the backing. So you do want it kind of like a shadow box. So you can see here it's quite thick. So I'm just going to remove this so that I have more space to work with and because we don't need the backing. I actually want to print off an image off the internet. I've got some Easter rabbits here and I'm adding it to some card because the paper's a little bit too thin. And now I'm just going to cut around it so I don't want the whole image. When you're doing this, leave a little bit at the bottom because we're going to need that later. Once you've got your cut out, you're going to bend this little tab that we've left here, just like this, and then we're going to add glue all at the bottom, and then add it to the frame. Now I'm going to add some detailing to the frame. Starting with the bottom, I'm taking these pearl beads off a bracelet of mine, and I'm just going to add some hot glue so we can secure it to the bottom of the frame. And then we're going to do the same with another one. Now I'm going to embellish the corners of my frame. And to do that, I'm taking my moulds. And I think I'm going to choose this one here. I'm just cleaning it out, this feather one. And so I'm just taking my hot glue and we're going to add that inside. As always, I do mention that you can use clay for this. So you're going to want four in total. And let it set for two minutes once you've got your hot glue in and you can peel it away and then do the other two. So I've taken my moulds out and then you might need to tidy it up a little bit, I usually do. So you just cut off any excess. And then I've got my Artis paints, again they will be in the description box. And these are really beautiful because they're pearlescent. I think I'm going to go with this one, I might add a little pink as well. And then you're going to take your hot glue again, add it to the back so that you can stick it onto the frame. And I'm going to be sticking these in the corner. Now to finish off, I'm just going to add a background from this book that I've got here. I'm just using my pencil to draw along the paper so I know how much to cut and then I'll stick it inside. And to stick the sun I'm just going to use little hot glue in all four corners. Here's the last DIY for today. I'm so happy with all of them. They're just really cute and I love the colours on this one. I'm so glad that I found this background. I think it's perfect. The first DIY I'm going to be starting off with some cardboard and a piece of burlap. You're going to take your scissors and cut it to size and then we're going to glue it onto the cardboard. When you cut your material out, make sure you leave a little bit of length on either sides and the bottom. 
because what we're going to do is turn it around like this and stick it on the back just like that so we're going to be creating a little pocket take your hot glue and apply some on the bottom and the sides and be careful with your fingers here and then you just want to stick it down just doing the other side now and you can also add a backing on here if you'd like to maybe hang it up as a wreath we're going to decorate this just by taking some ribbon and we're going to do the same thing, turn it around, add a touch of hot glue so we can stick it down. Turn it around, make sure it's nice and centred and then add a little bit more hot glue on this side. And then just cut it to size. Just to finish up, I'm taking this little bowl and it has a nice pearl in the middle. Attaching it, just using some glue. Again, making sure it's nice and centered. Now you're going to start taking your artificial flowers and you're going to trim them using your pliers. When it comes to your arrangement, you just want to make sure that the cardboard is covered. And we're going to start with some longer artificial greenery at the back here. You can see I'm just layering the greenery here. And then I'm just taking my flowers, I've got some flower heads. These are actually kind of like my scrap flowers that I've used for other projects. So that's really great because I'm getting to reuse them now. I'm also going to add in a few decorative eggs. I've got some silver and gold ones. And I'm just going to glue them in to the arrangement. So I'm still working on this corner here and then eventually spread out and finish it all. I'm also taking one of these wooden embellishments that I have of a rabbit and my acrylic painter pen. I'll leave the link for these in the description box because they're just so handy. So this is how it works and every time you need a little bit more you just press on it. And as you can see it paints pretty well, it saves you a lot of time as well and they dry pretty quickly. So I'm just going to hot glue the rabbit right there and look at that beautiful contrast it brings. Here's the first DIY completed. I really love it. I like the shabby chic elements and the farmhouse elements and also all of that colour with the florals. If you're going to be recreating this, I would definitely suggest to keep the bottom plain like I have because it's probably going to be too colourful otherwise and you just want all of the focus being at the top where the florals and arrangement is. For the second DIY, you're going to need an egg. This is a styrofoam egg and then a tumble tower block. I'm also going to be taking a piece of wire and this is so that we can attach the egg to the wooden block. So you're just going to poke that through your egg in the centre at the bottom and I'm just going to straighten it up and this is a little bit too long so I'm just going to cut it to size. The next thing you want is some twine and what we're going to do is cover the egg with twine so you just take your hot glue and start wrapping it around. Once you've covered your egg with twine, take your tumble tower block and take some scissors or something sharp. You want to try and make a small hole in the centre of the wood. This is just going to allow the wire to be more stable when we add the hot glue. Now you're going to take your egg, add some hot glue to the bottom and then we're going to start decorating with some nice natural moss. We're going to tidy this up as well so it looks a bit neater. Now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off all of the excess. We aren't finished yet but you can take your hot glue and add a little bit to the wood and to your wire. And then stick it in the little hole that we've made. 
Now I'm going to use the same acrylic painter in white so that I can paint this wooden block. I'm just going to decorate the egg using some of these flowers that I've got. They're in nice, beautiful spring colours. Some of them are a little bit too long, so I'm just cutting them. And then applying a touch of glue, just adding them to the egg. Taking that same bow that I used earlier, just adding it to the top of the egg. For the final touch, you can do this by hand, you can use your Cricut if you want. I do have a Cricut, but I am using my stamps. I don't know, there's something about stamps that just hand-finished look, I suppose. And that's what I'm going for with this. So I'm going to stamp hop. You can do spring, Easter, egg, anything you like. I'm just going to try to centre it and stamp it down. Might go over it with some Sharpie because it hasn't come out that well. I wasn't happy with the size of the flowers I used originally so I removed them and just added in some dried flowers and I really prefer that. This would look really nice as a set of three saying different things on the wood blocks. I just did one for the sake of the video just to show you all the idea. For the final DIY you're going to be starting off with a jar and then you're going to remove the lid. I'm also going to make use of some straw. And we're going to fill the jar with the straw. If there's any long bits, you can always cut them just to neaten it all up. Now I'm going to be taking this flower pot. I'm kind of going to take it apart actually. This is from Poundland. Now I'm just separating the eggs because I want them separately. So I'm going to take my pliers and cut them off because they are attached with some wire. Then you're going to remove the styrofoam so that you just have the arrangement. You might need to clean it up a little bit. I'm also going to cut these because it's too long to fit in my jar. So again, just taking the pliers and trimming them to size. Now take your flowers and place them inside. And now I'm taking my eggs and I'm going to place them on the sides so that they can be seen. And then finally you can take some ribbon to decorate the neck of the jar and I'm choosing a nice pastel pink colour to go with the colours that I've used and I just always think it's beautiful for spring and Easter. So here's the final DIY for today. This one was really quick and easy to put together but sometimes less is more. I feel like simplicity is just so beautiful sometimes. For the first DIY you're going to be starting off with some frames. This is the size I'm using, 9 by 13 centimetres, and you want four in total. You're just going to remove the backing because we don't need that. So do that for all four frames and the glass. And you can also remove these little bits here with some pliers if you like. Once you've done that, you want to take some hot glue or E6000 and you're going to start arranging them like this. So you're going to add some glue here. So you can stick these two together and then add some glue at the bottom so you can stick these together again making sure that there is glue on the side here as well. So this is my structure now all glued together. Then you want to take a container and I've actually got this and this and the flowers that I'm going to use all off a website called Zadil. So I will leave that in the description box if you're interested. But what you want to do is take the tray and then apply some hot glue so that we stick it to the bottom of the frame. Once you've done that, you just want to weigh it down with some stones at the bottom here so that we can add some flowers and carry on working on it. Then you go and start taking your flowers and arranging them at the base here. We're going to take a nest which I've added a little bit of moss to and I'm just going to angle it right here on top of the flowers and then add a few eggs to it. And then I'm just adding a little bit of detail taking some feathers and adding that to the nest. I'm 
taking some artificial ivy and I'm just going to hot glue it to the frame. And this is the first completed project. I really love the pastel colours as well as the bright flowers. It's just so uplifting to look at and I really love the addition of that nest. The next DIY I am using this east egg bauble. I got it off Amazon, they also sell them on eBay. The next thing you want to do is go onto the internet and type in lambs or anything you want. I've decided on this cute lamb here, so I printed it onto some card, we're just going to cut it out. When you're cutting your piece out, make sure you leave a little tab at the bottom, so you don't want to cut completely all the way. You want to leave a little bit of white paper or white card so that we can stick it down using that. So you can see I've left this piece down here and then what you want to do is bend it. So now you can see this is how we're going to stick it. We're going to apply some hot glue just at the bottom. I think I might just colour this area here so we can get rid of that white card. You want to take some flowers so that you can embellish a little piece. This is optional. So I'm just going to take this little piece off here. And then I'm just going to glue it to the side like this. I'm going to stick one piece of greenery just at the back, again using my hot glue. The next thing you're going to need is a toothpick and then some card. You can use a scrap piece if you like. You can use a Cricut or do this by hand. I am using these little stickers. And then it's up to you what you'd like to write out. I am probably going to write peace. Once you've done that, you just want to cut around it. And then you're going to take your hot glue and add a little in the centre of the little sign that we've made. And then turn it around and stick it to the toothpick in the centre. And then to make this stick a little easier, you want to remove this little sharp bit and you can do that just with some pliers like that. Then you want to add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom. And then we're going to stick it onto the back of the lamb. And once you've done that you're going to take your little arrangement and add it to the inside of the egg. Take the other half and close it up. And then I found this in the charity shop or the thrift store. And then I'm just going to add it to the bottom of the egg. You can use a candle holder, even an egg cup if you like. And here's the second completed DIY. I really love this. How sweet is it? It's just so adorable. I really like that this has a vintage vibe to it. For the final DIY you want a teacup and saucer, then you want some moss to fill the cup. I'm using reindeer moss and I think I might go with this colour, the other one is a little dark. So as you can see I have filled a teacup with moss, I've also added a little bit on the side on the bottom of the saucer here. Now we are going to start accessorising and adding in little bits. This is really fun, so here I'm using a little fence. This was also brought off the website that I mentioned earlier, Zadil. I really love it. It's got like everything for my crafting needs and it's really inexpensive as well. And then I'm taking this rabbit and now I think I'm going to start adding in some florals. For the florals I'm going to be using a mix. So I've got some dried flowers here. This is baby's breath. I think I'll add some to the bottom here. I just decided to add in some darker moss at the front because I think it was too bright for me. And now I'm taking some dried heather. We're going to add that to the back and it matches the fence really nicely. I think I'm just going to stick with using my dried flowers and no artificial flowers. Nothing beats the real thing, huh? And look at how beautiful these are. This is in pink and that one is the orange colour. So I'm just adding more natural dried flowers at the back and using different lengths and different colours. And here's the final DIY for today. If you've been following me for some time you'd know I really love creating little scenes in teacups and fairy gardens and this one is no different. 
I'm going to begin by painting this scrap piece of wood that I had left over and I'm going to be using some new acrylic paints actually so I'm quite excited to test them. This box here from Magic Fly. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description box because it's actually from Amazon. I've got loads of colours in this box and I'm going to go with white and I'm also going to choose brown just so I can create some lines and a little bit of texture on the wood. I'm actually really liking this paint. It's drying pretty quickly so I really like that because if you're like me and you're not very patient with paint drying then this company is actually really good and it also has like a chalk like finish and texture to the paint so I also really like that. Now I'm going to start adding in my brown. Once you finish painting and it's nice and dry you just want to sand it a little bit. Go on to the internet and find yourself a really nice spring background. So I have found this one here, I absolutely loved it and I've printed it out onto some card. And then you want to also go and search in some bird printables, a nice stencil that's easy to cut out. Now if you have a Cricut, you can do all of this on the Cricut and I do have one. But I'm just going to be doing this to show everybody else who doesn't have one. So when you're choosing your birds, you want to make sure you print two. And initially, they were facing the same way. But you're going to need to mirror or flip one of your birds. You can do this on loads of apps now. So then what you want to do is cut your two birds. So once you have both of your birds cut out, you're going to place it on the background. And you're going to draw along this and then remove this you don't need it anymore you can throw it away and then you're going to cut the bird out so that it's got the nice background in it once you've done that you're going to have your two birds looking like this well your pattern's probably going to be different to mine and then we're going to take the gloss mod podge we're going to go over it with a layer of that just to make it pop and stand out so that it doesn't get lost in the background so he's looking forward to spring, I know I am. I think it must be my favourite season. Let me know what your favourite season is down below. Now my birds are dry and they're really nice and glossy. I'm just going to highlight the edges of the birds again just to bring them out a little bit. So I'm taking just some ink and we're just going to go around the edges like this. Now I'm just going over the edges of the actual wood using this pink colour here, just like this. I'm taking my moulds, if you are a subscriber you'd know I've used this a few times. It's one of my favourite things to do to embellish something, you just take your hot glue and then put it inside your mould, making sure you cover everything. And then wait for it to dry and then you just simply peel it out. So you just let it set for maybe a minute and then you peel it out and it's going to look like this. You can also use clay in there, I just prefer to use hot glue. Sometimes you might need to tidy it up a little bit with scissors just cutting off any excess. For the embellishments that we've just created I'm going to be taking my Arteza iridescent colours. These are just so nice for embellishments because they have a shimmer to them. So we're going to start adding the paint to the embellishments, bringing it to life. And when you do this, the details really start showing up. Now I'm just going to set these to dry before we hot glue them down into the corners. Now you're going to take some hot glue and add it to the back of your embellishment. And then we're going to stick them onto the corner of our wood sign. To finish decorating, I'm adding little dots, they look like pearls, using this Doll Craft 3D Pearl Effect. Just adding them like this. Now we're moving on to the birds and we're going to attach them using these foam pads because they give them some depth. So I'm just going to add two to, to the body of the bird. So you can see I've done it with the other one here and I haven't stuck down the wings. I quite like them looking like that. And you can also see that it's given it some height using these foam pads. 
So I've got both of them on now. You might need to trim it a little bit. And I'm going to stick it, making sure it's equal, just the same on this side as it is here. And I'm sticking it at an angle. It's up to you. You can stick it this way if you like. Next we're going to be creating a bunting sign, so I'm just taking some scrap piece of paper here and we're going to cut little triangles out. First one you just need to cut one of them and then you can use this as a template for the rest. So here's my first one and then what you want to do is place it back on the paper and trace around it. Again if you have the Cricut you can do it using that. So just trace around it with your pencil like this and then remove it and then you're going to cut it out as many times as you need for the lettering so if you're spelling out spring you're going to need six triangles in total. Once you have all of your triangles cut out you're going to start adding the letters on top. So I'm going to just write S and then carry on spelling out spring. Next you're going to take some lace or any kind of ribbon that you like and we're going to hot glue the little burlap letters that we've made onto the ribbon. Once you've got your ribbon with spring written on there or whatever you like, you're going to take your hot glue and apply some just to each side or corner and then you're going to place it just under the beak of the bird like that. Now I'm going to do the other side and this is why it's good not to stick down the birds completely because I can just lift it up and add the sign. So this is the first DIY complete. I'm really happy that we didn't just stick the birds flat. I feel like they really look good elevated and highlighted as well. How beautiful are all of these colours? I really love the pattern inside the birds and how shabby chic this is. For well, the second DIY you're going to be starting off with a mason jar and you also want some paint. I'm using the same company that I used earlier and I'm using the colour turquoise. That's just so that it matches the decor that I made before with the birds so you can match your colour scheme as well. Start by just adding some paint inside your jar. Now you want to add in a decent amount because what we're going to be doing is closing it with the lid and then you're going to just turn it upside down and then let the paint run and just keep turning it so that it covers the whole mason jar. Once your jar is nice and dry you want to take some artificial flowers or some real ones. I actually wanted some baby's breath but because of lockdown all of the florists are closed so I'm just going to be using these two bunches here to make one full bunch. And I've also bent them just so that they can fit inside the jar that I'm using. I'm just going to decorate the neck of the jar using some lace. I'm going to cut it and then just glue it on. The next thing you want to do, well this is optional, but I know that Poundland and Dollar Tree have these butterfly decorative stickers in. So you can use those. Just because they're one size, I have gone and printed some out in various sizes and I've cut them out so if you don't have the stickers that's something else you can do these are just on some card and we're going to add a little bit more detail to them using some of these glitter glue pens once you've done that just bend them a little bit to make them more 3D I'm going to add a touch of hot glue just there and then stick them onto the flowers To finish decorating the neck, I'm just taking this hairband that I've had in my stash for a while now and I really loved it because of the embellishments so I'm just going to take this bit off here because it's like spring Easter related. I think I'm just going to cut it off, hopefully that will do and then I'm going to add it to the lace using some pliers and hot glue. So this is the second project completed. I'm really happy with it and I really love this rabbit charm. I think it just finished decorating the neck of the jar beautifully. I don't generally go with colours like this for my DIYs or decor. I tend to stick with neutrals but I think I just needed a pop of colour in my life right now. For the final DIY we're going to be making a wreath. 
I've just got this background again off the internet. I've printed it onto some paper because my printer was just getting really difficult to work with. It was not accepting cards. So if you can print on card, I would advise that. But I just have the paper and the card separate. So I'm just going to glue this on. Then I advise to use a glue stick instead of Mod Podge or PVA because it's too wet and it will just seep through and really ruin your image. Once you've done that, take your wreath and look at what area in the image you like best. I think I like this, so I'm just going to place my wreath on top and position it to where I want and then I'm going to take my pencil and draw along it. Once you've cut it out, just take your hot glue and add some to the sides of your paper. I'm going to be going over it with my gloss mod podge just to bring the colours out. Now we're going to start working on the wreath and I'm going to be using two different colours of moss. I've got this darker green here and then a lime green there. I'm just attaching it to the wreath with my hot glue as usual. Just finished adding in all of the moss, the two colours. I think they look really nice together. I'm just going to finish decorating now. I'm adding lots of dried flowers. I really love these because they're real and they're natural and they just look so beautiful. And this is the final project for today. Isn't it just so adorable? It's beautiful. It really screams spring and I love the addition of that rabbit. Today's DIYs are going to be really nice and easy. I'm starting off with this. I'm going to remove the candle because I just want the jar. Now I'm making use of some packaging that I received with something I ordered and we're going to turn this into a nest. So I've just grabbed a bunch and grouping it together, turning it into a circle. I need to make it a little smaller just to fit inside. You can also do this from raffia. And it's nice because it makes it look really rustic. And then I'm just going to work on the centre. Just filling it up. And then you can neaten it up, just take some scissors, cut off all of this excess here. Now I'm happy with my nest. I'm going to take some eggs and we're just going to place them inside. Then I'm going to be making use of my die cut book. You can just search something like this, like a vintage bird on the internet and print it out onto some card. I've just made a little cute bow with some twine and I'm taking some hot glue just so that I can add it to this little die cut piece of card that I have. And we're just going to stand it here at the back, I'm not gluing it in or anything. It's just standing with the straw and then I've also taken this lovely little saying again from the die cut book and I'm just going to place it here. Now I've just placed the jar on top and then we are going to be using this little bird. He is going to be sacrificing some of his feathers. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to place this inside as well. For the next DIY we are going to be making a wreath. So this is my wreath and then you need a piece of material. I'm just going to kind of roughly measure how much I need to cut. Once you have your material cut out you're going to stick it to your wreath on the sides at the back like this. Now I'm going to use my stamps to stamp out spring. This wreath is a little unusual actually for me. I've never had one that actually has like this going all around it, but it's holding the wreath together, but I really don't like it. So what I'm going to do is try to remove it, which I already have. I've cut it off, but I need to just remove it completely. And then I'm going to be using some of this trim here just to hold it together and hopefully it works and doesn't look so ugly. 
So as you can see I've removed all the ones from the top, I still need to work on the bottom ones. But what I've done is just tie one area here with the trim and then I slip some feathers underneath it. That way it looks like it's meant to be there for the feathers and I really like this boho vibe. So I'm just going to remove these and then I'm going to take this trim and wind it around. Now I'm taking this thrift find, I'm just going to cut this little bit at the bottom because the wreath is turning out quite boho so I thought this would be a really nice touch just to finish it up. Now I'm just going to attach it using some hot glue to the bottom of the wreath. For the final DIY you want a canvas and you can go as big or as small as you want. I was debating off camera and I decided in the end I will go with this cute small one here. So I'm just going to get it off the easel. I went on the internet and I found a background that I like again matching with all the other DIYs that I've done. So it's quite vintage looking and I printed it onto some card. Now I'm just going to size it up and cut off all of the excess. And then we're going to glue it down with some mud podge. You can also use PBA or a glue stick if you like. And when you're doing this, you just want to snip the edges here so that you can bend them across the canvas like this. taking one of the stamps that I have, this is some scripted font and then I've got some ink here that I'm going to use and we're just going to stamp the canvas that we've covered with the card. I'm just taking one of the stamps and going over the edges with a nice gold. Now I'm just taking a 3D butterfly sticker and I'm taking the gold and just going over the edges of the sticker with it and then on top as well because it's glittery and it adds a really nice shimmer to it. And now I'm just going to stick it in the centre of the canvas. And I'm just propping the wings up a little bit to make it more 3D. So I've just popped the canvas back onto the easel and now I'm taking this which was also from my die cut book it says beautiful life I thought it would finish this off perfectly and you can print your own you just type it up print it onto some paper stick it onto some card and then you can also add in some detail as I did before with the ink on the edges of the canvas that just makes it pop and stand out a little bit so I've added some sticky foam pads just to give it some dimension and then I'm just going to add it to the easel on the bottom in the centre. Here's the final project for today. I really love this. It's just so cute and sweet and I love that it's miniature as well. That's all of today's projects. Let me know your favourite and make sure you subscribe if you like my content and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.